Hey everyone, welcome back to another video for ICM 2.0, the Python version. In this video, we are going to be talking about how we can use the mouse as a draw tool by using some of those built-in system variables. And we are also going to take a look at how dictionaries in Python can help us keep our data a little bit more cohesive and organized, as opposed to needing to make dozens and dozens of variables. So to start out, I am in a blank editor that I have just added a few notes to. Um, I've made some notes of where variables might happen, and I also have an ellipse on my screen. There's no official starter code for this, so go ahead and open up any blank template and just make sure you get an ellipse somewhere on there. As always, you are welcome to pause the video, get that set up, you can rewind at any time, and once you are set up with your video and your code next to each other on your screen, go ahead and resume. Now, the first thing that we are going to talk about is how I can get my ellipse to follow the mouse, which we have seen before. Right now, this ellipse is hard coded to always be at the point 200, 200. But if I were to replace this with mouse X and mouse Y, it now follows the mouse around the screen. However, this isn't allowing me to draw designs on the screen, or at least it's not yet. Something important to remember about P5 and something that we will be taking advantage of through most of our projects is that the setup function runs exactly one time at the beginning of the program, whereas the draw function runs forever. It's on an endless loop. It is always repeating itself. Because of that, every time draw runs, which it runs roughly 60 times a second, it is drawing the background, and then it's drawing the ellipse, and then it's drawing the background again, which covers the last ellipse, and then it's re redrawing the ellipse, redrawing the background forever and ever and ever. If I did not want this ellipse to get covered up, I could take my background. Whoops, I'm doing a terrible job at copying. I'm just gonna get rid of some white space. And I could put it into my setup function. Now, when I run this and I move my mouse around the screen, I can see every instance of an ellipse that gets drawn. So I can draw some designs. You, you'll notice like if I go fast, it, they're really far apart. If I go slow, they're all kind of connected. And this is our first step towards drawing on screen. We could do more interesting things with this ellipse. We could make it different sizes. We could change the stroke or the stroke weight. Um, we could change the opacity so that it's like overlapping with itself. You can do all kinds of crazy things here that we're gonna have you explore a little later. One issue that might be coming up for you is this is a cool tool to draw with and maybe you are already seeing like a world of possibilities you want to explore but what if i don't want this thing to happen where let me rerun it i'm getting like all these spots what if i always want it to be a continuous line that's a wonderful question for us if we were to pause this comment out our ellipse and start drawing a line not a comment just a line um we can use mouse x and mouse y as one point but we are gonna notice a problem. Lines don't just have one point to determine their location, they have two. They are based on their endpoints. So mouse X, mouse Y, and then we need something else. If we just put mouse X and mouse Y again, it's gonna look a little funky. It's not gonna draw the way we are intending, but we can use something built in called P mouse X and P mouse Y. Now, when we run this, you'll see that we get a line. It weirdly starts from zero, zero, but we get a line that we can draw on the screen. If you are wondering about P mouse X and P mouse Y, that P stands for previous. So it is wherever your mouse was the last time the draw function ran. And we said that's happening very rapidly. That is still true, but it is updating based on where your mouse was before, where it is now, and it is connecting the point in between there every single time it draws, which is what allows this to work. You're welcome to try and utilize P mouse X and P mouse Y for other parts of your design as well. Um, I just want to call out to us that this is one way to use it. Now, I do want to talk about making our draw tool more interesting because we had our circle. We now have our line. This is cool, but it's not doing a lot other than just being like a black kind of pen pencil line on the screen. There may be things about this that I would like to change. If that is the case, I need to make some variables in order to have things that are changeable. And this is where we're going to introduce our new uh, concept in Python called a dictionary. Let's say I wanted to be able to change everything about my line. I wanted to be able to change the stroke weight. I wanted to be able to change the stroke color. Maybe I want to be able to change the opacity of that line. Maybe I'm dealing with an ellipse where I could also be changing the size in addition to the stroke weight, in addition to the fill. If we start thinking about the variables we would need for that, it's a lot 
of variables. So rather than deal with um, all of those and trying to keep track of them in our program, we're going to experiment with a dictionary. Now, there's lots of ways you can declare this in your code. I'm going to show you a fairly easy way where we are once again going to practice using that global declaration to make some changes to things. I'm going to start at the top of my page and I am going to make a variable that is called draw tool because that is what I'm referring to this line as. I'm going to put equals just like I'm doing with any other variable declaration. And then I'm just going to put two curly brackets. If you are looking for the curly brackets, they are um, like between the delete and return key on your keyboard, just slightly to the left um, above the square bracket. So you'll hold shift when you hit the square bracket button and you'll get these curly braces. Dictionaries are always declared in these curly braces. Right now, when we leave them empty, this is um, just an empty dictionary. There's nothing there yet. The reason why I'm not putting anything here is um, I suppose I probably could because what we have noticed throughout these videos is that it does not get mad when I do P5 specific things up here. I'm just, we're trying to practice global variables. You could declare a whole dictionary there. Um, in my setup, I'm going to make global draw tool. And here's where I'm going to do like my actual declaration of what's in my dictionary. Again, if you want to skip like this semi inefficient step, you can just know that if for whatever reason you do get a weird error because of using something P5 or sorry, processing specific P5 is the JavaScript version, you may need to revert back to this structure. Um, this structure is largely born out of working with the JavaScript version where it does get very mad out of trying to use things outside of a P5 function, in this case, a processing function. So I'm going to have draw tool equals. I'm going to have my curly braces, and they can either be on one line or separated. Personally, I prefer them to be separated. Now, the things that are going into my dictionary are called key value pairs. I have a key, which is usually a string. It's in quotes. It's usually a word. And the key is attached to a value. And eventually, we are going to see that we can use the key to access the value and to update the value whenever we want. So within this, let's start by call, making one called weight. That's going to be how thick my line is. I'm going to put weight in quotes. Then I'm going to put a colon. And I'm going to say that the weight is five. This colon is important to separate key and value pairs. It tells the computer that they go together, kind of like writing a ratio in math. And then because I want to add more, I'm going to put a comma. And I'm just going to drop down to the next line. We could, if we wanted to, separate things by commas and write it all in one line. That is completely acceptable. However, we sometimes run into issues where it becomes hard to read. And especially in Trinket, this editor does not text wrap automatically. And I actually don't know if I have ever found a way to make it text wrap. Um, I guess that's something to explore in settings. I have, maybe I haven't looked hard enough. Um, but dropping down one line, as long as it is comma separated, is perfectly valid and can sometimes make our code more readable. So I have weight. Um, I think the other things I'd like to change, I want to be able to change the stroke color, but I think I want to get really specific with it. So I want to be able to change the amount of red and green and blue. And clearly my computer is mad at me. <laughs> so I'm going to put red. I'm going to put it at 255 because surprise, surprise, we're starting with magenta. I'm going to put green at 255. I'm going to put blue at 255. And I'm going to set the opacity to like, let's do like 100. Um, so a few things to note. Again, everything is separated with a comma. You can put a space between the colon or not. Um, the computer does not particularly care about that. And you can also have like a leading comma on your last value and it won't get mad about that either. I personally think this is a best practice just because if you want to go back and add something, it's always there. And it also just keeps you in the habit that you are ending every key value pair with a comma every single time. So this is beautiful. Let's try and put this into practice. So I'm gonna head down to my draw function. I also just want to name that the reason why I am not doing this global draw tool in draw is because draw runs repeatedly and I want these values to be able to change. So at the beginning of my program, I want all of these values to exist. Again, this could have been done up top. We are just practicing our global declaration. Um, and then I want to have access to it here. So I want to use the global variable draw tool. I don't want it to think I'm using a new variable. Um, and I want to be able to plug them into my functions. So if I wanted to change the stroke weight using my weight key value pair, I would write my stroke weight function, 
And then inside of that, I would write the name of my dictionary, which is draw tool. And then I'm switching from curly braces to square brackets. It's the same key on your keyboard. You are just no longer hitting shift. And inside of that, I am just writing the key. I'm writing wait. Now, if I hit stop and play, you'll notice that I now have a much thicker line. I can also do this with the color. So I could for stroke, do draw tool for red and draw tool for green and draw tool for blue. And I can even do draw tool for opacity. Now, again, if I hit run, you'll see that I have, ooh, it's like a very, very, very white color. So let's up my opacity to like 200. Let's see what I get. It is still extremely white. What did I do? Oh, I made all of these 255. That's what I did. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make green zero. That was my mistake. There we go. Let's see what happens if I mark this down to 100 again. All right, there we go. So we get this kind of opaque color. You can actually see where my lines are starting and stopping drawing, which is something you may or may not enjoy having, but it is drawing on the screen. This is fine and good, but what if I want some of these values to change? So we're gonna hop into our old friend, the conditional, um, and we could write a conditional like, if mouse X is bigger than 200, I want draw tool weight, to be what is bigger bigger than 200 on this side of the screen. I want my weight to be 10. Otherwise, I want my draw tool weight to be five. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. So now, oh, that's, it happens. It's not super dramatic, but it happens. You can see that I have this little one. It suddenly gets thicker. I'm gonna actually make this 15. Oh my goodness, I now have something that changes. This could also be something that I perhaps ab start abstracting out into a function. I could take all of this information. I could stick it into a function called, um, I don't know, draw on screen. Um, if you do that, you will need to have a parameter that would feed draw tool into it, the um, dictionary. It would be expecting to get a dictionary and it would parse all that dictionary information out. I could start changing this into a function that will change the stroke weight for me so that I don't have to look at it. I could move all of those to another document. My possibilities are endless. Um, I can start adjusting color. Maybe I wanna have an if mouse Y is bigger than 200. I want the green value to be 50. Actually, let's make it 75. Um, Otherwise, I want the green value to go back to zero. I don't know what color this is going to make. I apologize. Mm, I don't think it's a super big difference. We'll experiment with that later. But you can work on adjusting all of these things so that they look substantially different. Um, I wonder what happens if I turn the red down. Um, let's make the red zero. And let's see if this gives me different results. Okay. There we go. I now get noticeably different results. I feel like the green isn't behaving the way I expect it to, but we can come back to that later. Um, so again, this is something that y'all can experiment with. Um, I encourage you to work on using your dictionaries, work on calling the values by using the keys, work on changing the values by using the keys, and just practice making something that draws on screen. A great challenge for this is to try and make the most unique drawing tool possible using everything we have learned so far. You can choose to draw with one shape. Right now I am just drawing with a single line. You can try and draw with multiples. A good challenge students have enjoyed in the past is trying to make a rainbow where it's many lines spaced apart so that it can draw a rainbow on the screen. Um, you can try and make any other combination of something unique and interesting you would like and then show it off to all your friends. In our next video, we're going to keep using our dictionaries and we are going to learn about the map function, which is a nice little one-off that we will hold on to throughout our lessons. See you there.